All right, so now we've got this problem here. This is the exact opposite of what we just did. Okay, what we just did was we had a problem where I gave you the equilibrium concentration of one of the products. That represented the change because it'd be x, in this case, 2x plus 0. So we found this stoichiometrically. We worked from knowing the concentration to solve for the Kc. So we had to have these to solve what the actual Kc is here. In the next problem, obviously we're going to be loaded with the equilibrium um, constant. We're going to solve for what these are at this equilibrium. So it's the reverse opposite. We're going to run into a scenario that I hope you'll see how we get around it. Now, so let's start. What do I have? I have a one liter flask filled with one mole of H2. That clearly means what? Molarity again is moles over liter. Not like in the magenta now. So that of course, one mole over one liter, I think I can do that. That's gonna be 1.0000 molar, okay? It's a good idea to keep your molarity in this ice table because generally want to take the equilibrium concentration and use it directly in the KQ expression. You could do this with moles. You, you, you don't, you know, you can't, you, know, you can be without, or you can do this in moles and, and solve at the end and then convert to molarity, but it's really good as we're learning this to keep this as a concentration. In any case, so the next one is we got two moles in the liter flask. Okay, and notice these are gases, but I'm still using molarity, so brackets will still be here. If, the, if these were partial pressures, I'd be using parentheses, okay? But they're gases, but I'm still using moles over the volume, still doing a molarity here. In any case, you would obviously get 2.000 molar for the I2, and you'd have what? Zero. And knowing that our KQ is here, and that we have no what? We have absolutely no products. We have 100% what? Reactants. Okay, we're starting right here. So clearly, okay, as my voice cracks, we are way above KQ. So Q is smaller than K. We're going to go forward. So we're going to lose, and this is going to gain. Guess what? We're going to lose the same X for each H. Why? Because they stoichiometrically have the same amount, 1. Minus x for the H2, minus x for the I2, and of course this will be plus what? 2x, x because there's twice as much, okay? Now, we have no information other than we know what the value of KEQ here, KEC is here. So what do we do? We keep going. 1.00 minus x is the value at equilibrium. We started with one molar, and we're minus x. Here we're two molar, and we minus x, and here it's plus 2x plus 0 is 2x. So these are my unknown quantities at equilibrium. Let's do our equilibrium expression. Every equilibrium problem will ask you to write it at least for a point. So Kc or Keq is equal to products Hi squared over the reactants H2. I'm using brackets even though they're gases because they're molarity still. Gases can be solutions. Okay? And a good thing of solutions. Solutions are homogeneous because you never want that scenario where you're running on the soccer field and you run into a pocket of no oxygen. Obviously, solutions are homogeneous. Okay? Always oh, about to score. Oh, we had a pocket of no oxygen. It doesn't happen. Okay. Now, oops. Okay? Now, let's solve. Well, we know the value of Kc is 50.5, and it's equal to what? Well, Hi squared would be 2x squared. Then we have what? x. Oh, I can't do that. Bad Krosky. Good pizza. We got what? 1.000 minus x. Morning, six figs, right? And 2.000 minus x 
And yes, yeah, someone just called it. To solve for x, we would need the quadratic here. This would be 4x squared. For, we did, we'd FOIL this. We'd, we'd, we'd make it so it's equal to 0. And we would use our quadratic formula. OK? Now, I'm not going to spend the next 15 minutes okay, doing this. So I'm going to show you the key. And the reason why I'm not going to have you do this is because, well, we're not going to do this in this course. Now, in truth, you would do this in any equilibrium problem that calls for it. But there's a way for us to circumvent this because most of our equilibriums that we're going to deal with are not as big as this. They're tiny, and there's a way to consider that. Question? Yeah. Um, how do you, aren't you supposed to uh, add the reactants on the bottom? Add the reactants. So I have. You're you know how you're multiplying them? Isn't it usually plus? No, no. This is, is always multiplying. Um, Every equilibrium. It's always a multiplication, okay. not an addition. Okay, so when you do like a Hess's law, where it's the products, the heat of formation of the products, then you would add two times. That's H two O plus. That's that, that's in Hess's law. But here, it's multiplied. Multiply. Mm -hmm. So let me show you the key. And I don't want you. This is my gosh. This is one of the problems you're going to see. This is a problem you can see later on in your chem career or college career. But you're not going to be doing it here. Let me show you. Okay. So let me show you. We just did this. Let's do this key right here. Here we go. So, yeah. no, so what we have for the people is the following. Yeah, I mean. Okay, let me explain. So we plugged in our values. We got our numbers. We see that we, we foiled this away. Okay, this I think. We foiled that to get this. We brought this to one side, and now we have our quadratic. So it's by simplifying, using a quadratic formula with a formula on your calculator, there's quadratic formulas, you solve for what x is. Okay? So basically, this is simplification. And then you solve for x. And as you remembered from solving, it's probably pretty cool because you did quadratic formulas in math. But here's a chemistry problem with a quadratic formula appearing. So they do appear. In fact, the reason why in math that you have learned to solve quadratic formulas is because somewhere in science, we need to know what the answer is to use that formula. So you blindly learn quadratic formulas. Maybe you graph them, too, and you solve for them. And don't know what I'm doing. But it, here's a reason why we have a way to, to figure them out, because there was a reason to use them. The reason every math problem you're working on is because there was an opportunity somewhere in science that had the need for it to answer a question. So here's an example where the quadratic formula appears in a science problem where we need the math skills that you learn to come up with it. Every math problem has a reason why it's being used. And here's an example for the quadratic. Yes? So we're never going to have to use a quadratic on the No, you won't because you won't have this kind of time. Okay? But I want you to understand it. So I plug it in. This is my A. A, my B, and my C, right? I plug them in. When you do it in your calculator, you're going to X to be 2.33. Now, once you find your X, what are you doing? Well, you're plugging them back in, aren't you? And you do 1 minus the X. Now, when you do that, you'll notice something. When you do that, you get two. First of all, when you solve for the quadratic, you get, sorry, you get two numbers. I'm going to reject one of them. Because 1.00 minus this big number gives me a negative value. makes no sense for molarity, so I reject that one. The other solution, the other root, I guess you call it, okay, works because it gives you a positive value. So I reject the one that gives give me numbers that don't make any sense. And negative values wouldn't make any sense for molarity. So I would take those numbers, and now I have the what? By two times in this x that we accept, we get the concentration of HI. By subtracting the x that we accept from that solution, the quadratic, we minus the one, of the, 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 away from the 1, away from the 2, to get the values of our concentrations at equilibrium. So this is how we would use it. And this is, you would see this probably not in a freshman level chemistry course, but you could definitely see it and understand it. It's not a big deal. You handle that math, you'd have to simplify. OK? Now, yeah. But it's, I think it's kind of cool to see that 
this is an example of where math and reality finally meet for you guys, hopefully. Like, I've been doing quadratics. I've seen this before, but I never knew why. Well, here's an example. All right, any case, we don't normally go this route in chemistry because most of the equilibriums that we care about are really, really tiny. So therefore, there's a way to circumvent this, and I'm going to show you that once you guys get this down. By the way, this is posted, okay, so if you want to make a little closer look, but if you want to get that down. So there's a way to circumvent this. So what I want you to take out now is equilibrium 6A. I'm going to show you an equilibrium problem with a small KEQ, much smaller than this one. So let's take that out. Six A. 